The Church of South India was born in 1947, the same year in which India became an independent nation. For the six decades that have passed since that glorious year, the Church has toiled hard to make lasting contributions to India's progress, peace and prosperity by serving all sections of the people of South India, regardless of caste, class, religion or gender. The CSI came into being after a long process of prayerful dialogue amongst the many Christian denominations, including Anglicans, Congregationalists, Presbyterians, Methodists, and later the Basel Mission, who yearned for unity and fellowship. The first bishops of the church were consecrated in a moving service that was held on the 27th of September, 1947, at St. George's Cathedral in Chennai, sharing a common faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and eager to be channels of His love for all of humanity. They came together in that amazing year of freedom to form a new and united church, bringing the good news that in and through Jesus, God was reconciling humanity to Himself the church began reaching out to serve the people of this great land of ours. Two thousand years ago, Jesus, through his life and teachings, brought hope and transformation and a new vision of justice, love and peace to a world weary with war and injustice, prejudice and despair. For the Church of South India, Jesus remains the undying inspiration behind all its services to humanity through education, welfare programs, and health care. The Church has humbly borne witness to the transforming power of God who has worked through innumerable men and women of faith and dedication in every generation. The Church of South India today has 22 dioceses covering the five states of South India as well as Jaffna in Sri Lanka. The CSI comprises four million members grouped into 15,000 congregations. The church directly administers 2,013 schools with hostels, two medical colleges, three engineering colleges, 51 polytechnics, 104 hospitals and clinics, 512 boarding homes and hostels, and 22 homes for the aged. Through all these, the Church serves Indian society and contributes to nation-building on a very significant scale. The combined impact of these institutions on social transformation and the uplift of the underprivileged sections of Indian society is truly immense. The Church takes its commitment to education very seriously. If India is to emerge as a strong and successful nation in the decades ahead, education is a key area that must be nurtured. Through its numerous educational institutions, the CSI is empowering a whole new generation of young Indians who can be expected to mold their nation's destiny in a decisive way as the 21st century progresses. If the people of India are to benefit from the fruits of development, 
it is of the utmost importance that those who constitute the weaker sections of our society, the Dalits, the physically and mentally challenged, the rural and urban poor, have equal access to quality education and vocational training. For the CSI, this is an important priority because it is the direct outcome of the Church's faith in the Lord Jesus, who boldly proclaimed that he had come to seek and save the lost, the marginalized, and the poor. Through education, the Church seeks to empower the powerless and put them on the road to economic well-being and social dignity. The Church, in its educational mission, hopes to provide equal opportunities to all sections of society. The millions of students who have passed out of educational institutions run by the Church of South India have made immense contributions to nation building in all walks of life. They include distinguished scientists, doctors, administrators, agriculturists, engineers, soldiers, philosophers, artists, actors, writers, social workers, lawyers, judges, human rights activists, theologians, politicians, and diplomats. Three of India's presidents have been products of CSI institutions. Education is the primary means through which people are liberated from the clutches of ignorance and superstition and empowered to lead lives of dignity and resourcefulness. The Church is especially committed to empowering rural and marginalized youth through vocational education that emphasizes the imparting of valuable skills. These skills will help them earn their livelihood and become economically self-reliant. Boarding homes and hostels provide free food and accommodation to students from underprivileged backgrounds and to orphans and abandoned children. Another special concern is education for the differently abled, those who happen to be physically and mentally challenged. Whatever the nature of their disability, programs of special education are designed to affirm their dignity as human persons loved by God. They are helped to acquire the basic skills needed for self-reliance and integration with the social mainstream. The Church is also actively involved in the rehabilitation of people belonging to sexual minority groups such as transvestites and others of indeterminate gender. Through vocational education and spiritual enrichment, these people are now enjoying a newfound dignity and self-confidence. The Church places special emphasis on the empowerment of women, following the example set by Jesus Christ, who upheld the dignity and equality of women. In rural areas all over South India, the Church is engaged in organizing women's self-help groups. Using the powerful instrument of microfinance, these women are assisted to set themselves up as entrepreneurs who deploy a wide variety of skills to find sustainable livelihoods. The welfare, care and nurture of the girl child 
is an important priority in the programs adopted by the church. The rehabilitation and empowerment of victims of HIV AIDS is another major thrust area. The church, through its counseling and vocational training programs, lovingly reaches out to these brothers and sisters who face considerable social stigma and helps them recover their health, self-confidence and livelihood. These programs and activities bring the light of hope to lives blighted by the darkness of disease and despair. The care of the sick was a very important concern for Jesus Christ, who went around bringing healing to the sick and the dying. Through its numerous hospitals and clinics, many of them in remote rural districts, the CSI provides quality health care to the poor and needy, either free of cost or at very affordable rates. The care of the elderly is a matter of great importance for the Church of South India. In the 22 homes for the aged run by the church, senior citizens are helped to cope with the frailties and discomforts that are commonly associated with the evening of life. By providing them with shelter, nutrition, fellowship, spiritual inputs and recreation, the church enables them to enjoy a holistic enhancement of the quality of life. The Church of South India looks back with gratitude to God for enabling her to serve humanity inspired by faith in the Lord Jesus, who embodied the boundless and sacrificial love of God for all mankind. The Church looks forward to the future, confident that God will help her in her ongoing struggle to express solidarity with broken individuals and communities and to offer them new hope to face the challenges of life. The CSI hopes to continue being an instrument in the hands of God to bring peace, harmony, healing, and hope to everyone who yearns for life in all its fullness.